Where did the Jews get an Arabic style of culture? Where? It's the, it's the background where we came from. My family, for example, came from Yemen to Israel. Although my, my father was born in Israel and my mother was one year old, but I was born in Israel and as a matter of fact, as much as I, I have good ear and I speak some Arabic, uh, when we were young we didn't want to hear the language around. We, we just hated it when, when our parents were, were talking Arabic, which was really Yemenite Arabic. It was, it's like the Yiddish for the Ashkenaz, it's like Ladino for the Sephardim. Yemenite, Jewish Yemenite is different than Arabic. It's, it's, it, they have a lot of their own words. In it. What happened to the Jews of Egypt and Yemen and uh, from the Arab countries? What happened to the Jews in the 1950s? Well, the, the, the Jews from, from the 1950s, I know about the Yemenites, they had, I mean, all of them had to escape right after the war. Uh, in 48. In 48. 48 and, and the, the Jews of Egypt really ran away after the 54th war, which 54, 1954 war. That was a real escape because there was no chance for them. The Yemenite Jews came back uh, in 1950. Uh, it was a massive uh, airlift. It was called On the Wings of Eagle. Uh, and Magic Carpet, was it they called it? Magic Carpet was from Iraq. Magic up with it and the wings of eagle, and there was an amazing story. They were so unaware of modern life that when they put them on the airplanes, they tried to put a fire camp to to cook their coffee. It was really very funny, you know, to, to learn about that. So, would you say that there's a, an acceptance of the Arabic culture in, uh, among Israelis today? When I was growing up, when I was a very young girl. It was very difficult. Uh, there was such a confusion and such this exception of Middle Eastern with with Ashkenaz. It was, I mean, really a lot of discrimination uh, I mean, against Sephardic Jews. Yes, and later on, slowly, slowly, they could not prevent it because the kids grew up together, you know, like equally, and they fell in love. And today, almost there is no home that there is no at least one mixed marriage. And actually the beauty of Israel is the mixed marriage because the kids that came out of mixed marriage are gorgeous. They're just like breathtaking to see, you know, to look at. So that's, I think Israel benefit, and not only that, uh, the Middle Eastern, I can talk much about the Yemenites because the Yemenites came and brought great culture to Israel. Great, great, great. It's in art. Mamuna, uh, they brought the holiday. No, no, Mamuna is the Moroccan. <laughs> Don't confuse the Moroccan. Is there a Yemenite holiday? Uh, no, okay. but the Yemenites well, the brought holiday. embroidery, uh, jewelry, dance, and singing. Most of the Israeli singers, the best singers in Israel, are Yemenite. That no, 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 uh, no disagreement question. about yeah. it. Yeah, that's for sure. Anyway. Yeah. Now, are Israeli singers popular among Arabs too? Yes, they are. You remember the girl? Um, eh, eh, oh my God! Faster. Ofa Haza. Ofa Haza. She did a whole number of Yemenite songs, original Yemenite songs, and she became very popular in the, in the Arab world. And there are some other Israeli singers, Zava Ben, and some others. I I did not go much Oriental. I really am more. Uh, of a pop singer, folk and pop. And in my concert, for example, that's coming up, I'm doing ethnic songs, I'm doing uh, heritage songs, and I'm doing a lot of pop songs and my own compositions that I write, which is today's kind of music. I remember your hit song, Beleva Chag. Right. It's still a hit song. 30 years later. How does it go? There's no day. How does it go? Salam Aleikum, Botarit Shalom. Come and say shalom. You know, this is a song that I recorded right after the peace treaty between Egypt and Israel was signed. And I'm telling you, until today, it, it, the message of it is, Salam Aleikum is peace to you in Arabic. Botagit Shalom is come and say shalom. And until today, they play it in every club, in every wedding, in every bar mitzvah, in, in the streets, in malls, everywhere. And the young kids know the song. That's it, it's on the radio every day. It's a standard, it's become oh, yeah. become part of uh, culture. Right, right, with the difference of other uh, singers of my age, 
mine is truly contemporary so it's just like you know today yeah uh, were you uh, it's the anniversary of uh, the Rabin assassination right were you there then uh, during the Rabin assassination I was not in Israel I was 95. here and I was shocked but after that I was invited as a matter of fact I was performing with the uh, with our friend next door, oh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Richard Wright. An evening for, uh, in memory of Rabin, the year after he was assassinated, and Mrs. Rabin came to LA, and I was the, the celebrity performer for that year. Yeah. Yeah. And I sang the peace song that you know was created while Rabin was uh, assassinated, so it was very special. In your experience, are the Palestinians ready to accept Israel as a Jewish nation? I doubt it. I doubt it. There's so much anger. And they just don't want us. They just don't want us. I hope that a miracle will happen. They just don't want us. Look, see what's, what they're doing. And so when people think of uh, the Mideast peace process, isn't Israel prepared for peace? But Israel is, has been always prepared for peace. And I think the uh, media is mispresenting mis, uh, Israel because the Palestinians have a ma massive promotion promotional propaganda. propaganda and we cannot fight with them for some reason there are a lot of people who favor the Palestinians because they consider them refugees but they are not refugees because they chose to leave and their leaders told them go away and we'll bring you back once we wash away Israel to the sea and that's in 1948 of course and it's still there I mean Israel does not exist we'll see what Ahmadinejad is uh, saying about uh, Israel they're going to wipe us out. They will not be Israel if we are not strong and if we don't, if we don't have enough friends. But I believe that Israel will always, will always survive. With President Obama pressing for such concessions yes. from Prime Minister Netanyahu and this government, well, trying to drive a wedge between the rest of the world and Israel. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I really am worried. I really am worried. I hope that things will change for the better. For the better. Help us. <laughs> Spread the word. And stop pressuring Israel to make concessions until right. the Palestinians right. are willing. Look what we did. We, gave, we came back from Gaza. We returned back. And look, it's, it's worse than what it was. And the minute they left Gaza, they destroyed all the new settlements that took 25 years to build. A whole, a whole civilization was built. And they destroyed it. It's like a, you know, a dump pail. Pale of dumb, what do you say? How do you say? Yeah. Right? You, you think the focus ought to be changed, uh, uh, switched off of Israel and onto the Palestinians now to be the, the ones to be uh, accepting of the others? I think, but I don't think you can talk to them. I don't think they are, they are uh, willing to understand what we want. I know that there should be concessions from Israel, but Israel has been giving away quite a lot. Um, and I'm sure that they will give a little bit more, but it's the security. If you have a neighbor that is 100 feet, 100 feet from your home, would you be safe? No, knowing that they're shooting on top of you and so, you cannot. So you gotta be very smart, you gotta be very careful. Many people look to you from, from the left, they look to you as, as uh, having been a, a peace advocate for so long. But, but what would you say to them who are not as informed as you are? Who are thinking about about the situation in Israel and Palestine? I would always say that that we're only looking for peace. I want to tell you that last week I performed okay. for an organization called Braveheart, uh, for women organization that attract 25,000 uh, women all over the world. There was a convention at the Century City, and I sang with a Palestinian singer together a peace song, and it was the most touching moment. And here she is, a Palestinian who was Miss. Palestine, gorgeous girl, her name is Amal, and we sang together, and we hugged and we loved, and the rest of the audience loved every minute of it. So there are people who want to have peace. It's just, you have to... The politicians, the government. I think the politicians are messing it up. But isn't it always the politicians? Good luck in your concert. When is it? December 14th. Will it be? It will be December 14th. Which night? Uh, it's Tuesday night. It's just uh, just about the time of Hanukkah, just almost at the end. And uh, uh, there will be, it will be a great concert. I'm having a full band and beautiful uh, multimedia effects. And so it will be really very, very pretty. So, What's your website people can find out about it? It's Hedva, 
H-E-D-V-A, Amrani, A-M-R-A-N-I, dot com.